today I'd love to teach you how you can create the AB difference viewer for the fusion page. So if you do noise reduction for visual effects, you'll have a, a way of knowing when you've gone too far with your noise reduction. So if you're unaware on the color page, if you go to the highlight mode and then you go click on this AB mode, it might be over there, click AB mode. This is basically giving you a difference for what you've changed on a, on a node over here in the color page. So the noise reduction, which is a, a great um, studio feature of DaVinci Resolve. If you come in here and you start making a change, you'll actually be able to see the details that you're removing. Uh, that's just how that works, but it's not native to the Fusion Viewer, so we're gonna create it. So I'm gonna reset this right now, and we'll just go to the Fusion page and pretend like we're gonna start to comp this this shot right here. Now, the first thing I do, this is um, this is log. I'm gonna turn my view light off. It's S log three footage. Uh, when I first think about comping, I think about how do I get into linear as fast and quick as possible. And the way I've been doing it lately is just with the Cineon log tool. Because by the way, my pro my color management settings for my project are is not color managed. So this way I can choose, do I want to put noise reduction in linear or do I want to do the noise reduction in log? And I don't really know the right answer to that. I, I've heard a lot of stories and I've tried it both ways and I get different results, but I want to know from you down in the comments, do you denoise in log or linear? Now, we're going to use the tool that's built in here and I'm first going to get into linear just because then we can at least see things and be ready for comp. And the tool I'm using is Cineon Log. I'll load that into the viewer. And I've got over here is the tool I'm using Sony, Sony S-Log3. And the one thing I do want to point out that's really important is under settings, uh, I've been teaching the crop technique a lot lately. And the default on the Cineon Log tool is to clipping set to none. And sometimes you'll notice if I move my cursor outside of the 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 image canvas or off of the, the the domain, the bounding box, you'll see I have a negative value, negative 0 0.01402. That's going to be an issue for a lot of times when you do cropping because it's going to retain that negative out there on the edge. So my suggestion, if you use Cineon Log Tool, which is great, if you use it the way I'm doing it at least, change the clipping mode to domain, and that's going to lock you in so that it cancels out to zero on the edge of the, the frame. Now that you have an idea of how we're working with Linear here, let's go ahead and do some noise reduction. I'm going to do it the traditional VFX way, which is, says we should do noise reduction in log space. So I'm going to do that right after the footage. Shift space, noise reduction. Uh, I'll load that into the viewer. And I'll turn off the view let because, again, we're just looking at the log image right now. Now, the tool or the, the set of tools we're going to need to create the AB difference on the Fusion page is just two of them. It's really simple, and you can save these as a macro or in your settings later. Shift space, channel booleans is the first one. One with the S, the one I use all the time on the channel. If you've been here for a while, you know how this goes. We're going to change operation on this one either to subtract or divide. Uh, the one that I found that matches the color page the most is divide. So operation divide. and we're not doing anything to an alpha channel, so I'll just say do nothing there. Now, what do we divide? We divide the original plate by the noise reduced version. So if you've done frequency separation with me before, it's generally dividing by the blurry version. The same concept here. I'm going to divide by the noise reduced version, um, but we haven't made any changes at all yet. So the next thing we need to do is actually adjust this. You can see we've got a code value of 1 everywhere because the same thing divided by the same thing is 1, right? Um, but what, what we want to do is add a brightness contrast tool. So BC, and the brightness contrast tool has, well, it has a brightness setting. This is just a, a pl plus of pixels and a minus of pixels. So if I bring this back to 0.5, which is middle gray, like actual middle gray, I can just click in here, say negative 0.5. And that just made a gray image. See the code values, negative 0.5? So what this is going to allow me to do is if I make any changes here, noise reduction, I will see those represented on this gray image, a lot like the color page AB difference viewer. So if I come over here, and by the way, pro tip, the noise reduction tool over here, never use this on faster. There's, I, I can't really ever think of a reason to change it to better. Otherwise, don't do it because you just you, you might as well just use a blur. Um, so change it to better, better. Let's increase the threshold amount until we start to see something change in here and we're starting to see some, some action. So this is the differences in the image. This is the noise that I'm re removing from the image. I'm viewing the brightness contrast. The only other thing that I think is really different potentially on the color page one is there's no color. So if you take the saturation out completely, 
that might be a little bit less distracting if you're evaluating for how far do I go with my noise reduction. As well as sometimes you might want to add like an unsharpened mask if you want to amplify the view a little bit more. But you can also do that in the viewing LUT by just taking the gamma slider and, and just sort of changing contrast uh, there as well. Whatever, you know, whatever floats your boat. Um, I will say the other thing to think about with the noise reduction is if you use temporal for things like a green screen, uh, be careful. Things like hair will artifact pretty quickly, especially if you have a lot of frames that it's evaluating. I would suggest starting with one, which means it's looking at one frame before the frame it's on and one frame after, and it compares all three of those frames to try to remove the noise. Taking a look here at this, this is basically our AB difference uh, you know, tool. If we increase the temporal threshold, it is going to slow down. Um, and if we want to see it actually after we've applied everything, we'll look down here at our Cineon Log tool. I'm going to zero out my gamma, turn on my view LUT, and we can take a look here and see have we lost too much detail. If I turn noise reduction off with Command P, yeah, we probably have. You see, I've lost some of those beard hairs that, that we probably wanted to keep. So. There's lots of ways to evaluate it. This is just one of them using the brightness contrast tool. So I will mention one more thing. Another way to sort of evaluate noise reduction that should be said is that we have channel viewers really easy to access on the Fusion page. So right up here we have red, green, and blue. So just the shortcuts for it are R, G, and B on the keyboard. So if we take a look at the image here, R, this is typically going to be a noisy one with a green screen. And you can see if I turn that on, that's all the noise we've removed from there. So that's going to give us a, a much, much easier job for the Delta Keyer to, to get rid of everything. G, green's always going to be the least noisy because we have the most data there. And then B is somewhat noisy. So I've definitely gone too aggressive, in my opinion, on this one. So I'll probably come back and, and lower that. But hopefully this has been helpful for you. The brightness and contrast tool is has so many uses. Um, this is one you might not have thought of to sort of get this sort of difference mat of everything. Now, if you want to save this for later uh, and you can't remember this, if you just select your nodes and then you right click on a node, you say settings, uh, save as, you can basically save this in your Fusion macro so you can just call this up later. So I might call this uh, noise check. And watch what I can do. Next time I come over here, if I hit shift, shift space and I look for noise check, this is a special set of nodes that I can call up with just, they're already set. That's already set to divide. This is already set to negative 0.5. I can have this ready to go. And you can do this with lots and lots of nodes in Fusion. Hey, my name is Chadwick. I appreciate you so much. I'm a DaVinci Resolve trainer here in New York. And because there's so much more to learn, I'll see you in the next video.